And the Lord said, I counsel thee to buy of me gold tried in the fire, that thou mayest be rich, and white raiment, that thou mayest be clothed, and that thy shame of thy nakedness do not appear, and anoint thine eyes with eye salve, that thou mayest see. Such important words that we buy of that gold that is tried in the fire, the word of God, and that we properly invest it. Welcome this day to the Shepherd's Word Church, where we will be teaching, continue teaching the revelation of Jesus Christ. And we're going to learn a little more about the uh, Trumps today, and we're going to learn a little bit more about that great apostasy that everyone has heard so much about. Uh, let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, we truly do love you, Lord. We thank you, Father, that you have loved us so much and you have shown your love to us and that you have laid down your life for us to take away the sins of the world and redeem us back to you that we may be with you in eternity, one big family again, Lord. We thank you for that, Father. Lord, we thank you that you have sent us this word, this beautiful letter of love that we call the Bible, the word of God. And Father, we thank you that... So many have written in and, and asked for prayers that shown us their needs and, and we've gathered together and prayed for them. And Lord, you know their needs. You know where they are, Father. We ask that you bless each and every one. And Lord, I, I lift up somebody very special, Lord. You know the prayer that, that I have prayed and that we're what we're thanking. We need an answer, Lord. We ask for your healing, your help, Father. And Lord, I thank you for those that have invested wisely this gold tried in the fire that they have shared, they have invested and shared with others, shown their love for others in the world by, by sharing these truths that you have given us. We thank you, Father, for all these things. And Lord, I ask that you be with me as, as we work our way through these words, that your Holy Spirit would wrap around mine and we bring all things to my remembrance and lead me and guide me and direct me, Lord. Not my words, but your words, Father. Thank you, Lord, in Jesus' precious name. Amen. So before we uh, begin back in Revelation, and we're going to get uh, into Revelation chapter 9, but I, I wanted to go to the book of Ezekiel, and because we, we see so much about the one-third of the people and another third of the people. And, you know, we saw even in Revelation chapter 12 where Satan, by his, by his tail or by his followers, he drew one-third of God's children with him, deceived them and, and, and led them away from our Heavenly Father. And I want to go back to a time, it's, it's historical, but that history, as Paul said, those things that happened in what we call the Old Testament, that they were history to us, but they're actually prophecies of things we would see in the last days. So um, in, in this uh, uh, Ezekiel chapter 5, the Lord is dealing with Judah and the fact that Judah has brought in so much false teachings have brought in so much idolatry, have corrupted even the holy place of God. And the time has come that Judah was going to go into captivity and go into captivity under the king of Babylon. And that particular king at that time, that was Nebuchadnezzar, but, uh, but he was, he was a type or a likeness of the king of Babylon of the last days. Because that king of Babylon has always been. He was with God in, in, in the beginning and uh, held seven kingdoms in that world that it was and had ten kings, those ten crowns that we'll see even in the book of Revelation. And we see that those, those one-third and one-third and one-third, how they're broken up. And God addresses that in this fifth chapter of Ezekiel here. Because... As you can look around the world today and see the nature of God's children. And, you know, there, there's a third that will just outright, Satan's got them. I mean, they're ready to follow him. They love his plan. They don't love God's policies and God's 
politics and God's plan that God had. They think Satan offered them a better deal and they followed after it. They went for it. And then there's that one third. They just seem to be sitting on the fence. They're like, well, I don't know. He's he's got a pretty good deal, but you know, I kind of like that one too. They're not really set. Then there's those that say, you know, I really don't care. I just want to go fishing, you know, and, and whatever it is, just let it be. And, and, uh, just, just leave me alone. Then there's that elect, those who truly love God's word, zealous for God's word and zealous for that time that will be holy again, where we won't have all the pain that is brought on by the sins of this world, because the sins of this world are what break up families, cause problems, corrupt nations. So let's read a little bit about Ezekiel here. And the Lord speaking to Ezekiel, uh, chapter 5, verse 1. And thou, son of man, take thee a sharp knife, take thee a barber's razor, and cause it to pass upon thine head and upon thine beard, and take thee balances to weigh, and divide the hair. And what he's going to have him do here is shave all his hair off and use that to represent his multitude of his children. And we know that he has billions of children. I mean, there's, they claim there's about 8 billion of us on earth today. So using that hair off his head and off his beard to represent children, his children, too. He says, Thou shalt burn with fire a third part in the midst of the city. When the days of the siege are fulfilled, so do it right there in plain sight so everybody can see you. Because they're going to ask, like, what are you doing? So do it right in plain sight. And thou shalt take a third part and smite about it with a knife. And a third part thou shalt scatter in the wind, and I will draw out a sword after them. So we're going to see all these same likenesses as we in Revelation. As I said, this history becomes our prophecy in the last days. Three, thou shalt take thereof a few in number and bind them in thy skirts. There's God's elect. And it's very few. There's not many. Just a few. Just considering how many children on earth, there's not many. Then take of them again. So they're, they're bound up and kept safe in his, in his skirt for a time to come. Thou shalt take thereof a few in number and bind them in thy skirts. Four, then take them again and cast them into the midst of the fire and burn them into fire, for thereof shall a fire come forth into all the house of Israel. So even God's elect will walk through that time of tribulation, that fire that will test them, prove them like fine gold. So it won't bring harm, but it will test them. You know, the word tribulation, many times there's, there's not, not the same word is always used, but there's one word that's translated as tribulation, and it means to put it to the touchstone. In other words, you take a knife and you sharpen it to the touchstone and you test it. What will it cut? It'll cut paper. It'll cut wood. And then you put it back to the touchstone. And that's tribulation, testing that thing. And then what will it cut now? You know, you can cut something harder. Pretty soon you can cut other steel with it. And that's what God is doing with many of his elect, putting them to the touchstone so that they become sharper and sharper and are more ready. Verse 5, Thus saith the Lord God, This is Jerusalem. I have set it in the midst of the nations and countries that are round about her. And she hath changed my judgments into wickedness more than the nations. So she's done more wickedly than all the nations around her at that time. And of course, you know, we may be watching that happen again or even right now. And my statutes more than the countries that are round about her. For they have refused my judgments and my statutes. They have not walked in them. And we do see that. As the Lord said that there's five out of seven churches on earth today every five out of seven that he's not happy with only two out of seven that he's pleased with that will actually be teaching god's truth in these days therefore thus saith the lord god because we multiplied 
uh, more than the nations that are round about you and have not walked in my statutes, neither have kept my judgments, neither have done according to the judgments of the nations that are round about you. Therefore, thus saith the Lord God, uh, surely because thou hast defiled my sanctuary with all the detestable things and with all thine abominations, therefore will I also diminish thee, neither shall mine eye spare, neither will I have any pity. 12. A third part of thee shall die with the pestilence. And, we're, and we read about that pestilence in these last days. And with the famine, we read about that, that famine of hearing the word of God. Shall they be consumed in the midst of thee, and a third part shall fall by the sword round about thee. And I will scatter a third part into all the winds, and I will draw out a sword after them. 13. Thus shall mine anger be accomplished, and I will cause my fury to rest upon them, and I will be comforted, and they shall know that I, the Lord, have spoken it, my zeal when I have accomplished my fury in them. 14. Moreover, I will make thee waste and a reproach upon among the nations that are round about thee in the sight of all that pass by. And you know, God using Israel in the way that he does and Judah in the way that he does. And as I said, you know, some people say that they're the chosen people. They were chosen. Yes, Israel was not just Judah, but Israel, all of Israel was chosen. And God uses them for all the rest of the world to see. It, as I said, it's not always a good ride, not always an easy ride, because they take more spankings than the other nations do. When they mess up, the world is watching. They're used as an example. And 15, so it shall be a reproach, and a taunt, and instruction, and an astonishment unto the nations that are round about thee. All the nations are watching. When I shall execute judgments in thee in anger, and in fury, and in furious rebukes, I the Lord have spoken it. 16. When I shall send upon them the evil arrows of famine, which shall be for their destruction, and which I will send to destroy you, and will increase the famine upon you, and will break your staff of bread, everything you've got in the store is going to be gone. 17. So will I send upon you famine and evil beast. And these evil beasts are those uh, serpents, or as you might say, the, the serpent seed, the children of Satan. It's not snakes, but we do call him the old serpent. That's what these wicked ones are because of the poison that comes from their mouth, the poisonous words that come from their mouth, not a bite, the words that, that comes from their mouth. And they shall bereave thee, and pestilence and blood shall pass through thee, and I will bring the word upon thee. I, the Lord, have spoken it. So we see how God, you know, the, the one-thirds and the one-third and the one-third, it always has been. You know, we when God said, looked, and, and uh, after that great catabol, that great overthrow of the world that was, that great destruction, and he said, let us make man in our image. It means a phantom image of what we look like in heavenly bodies. Let's make a body from the dirt to look just like it in that phantom image. And of course, he included himself. But our same nature, our same spirit comes with us. And it's just as it says, you know, when we die, our spirit immediately returns to God who sent it. So we have our same spirit. So you can look today and see who's in the world. I assure you that the greatest part, if not dang near all of that one third that followed Satan are on earth today at this time, right here with us. And because they will strive to bring about Satan's kingdom on this earth, this last final kingdom. He'll have a total of seven, but he will also be called the eighth when he's let out of that uh, bottomless pit for a short period after the millennium. So <clears throat> looking back on the things that we had covered, uh, and you can, and you know, I hope I did a good enough job that you could see how the seals and the trumps are lining up with just a different view. And you're going to see that, that the vials do the same thing. You'll have just a different, looking at it from a different angle 
of the things that are happening. It kind of fills in a little more information with the seal and then the trump and then with the vial. And, you know, uh, so, you know, we, we read about that great mountain burning with fire that was cast into the sea and cast upon the people. The people didn't vote for it. They can't vote it in. They can't vote it out. It's coming. And uh, basically, it's kind of here. It just hasn't come to full establishment yet. But all the nations are working together to bring it about. But, uh, you know, I, I showed you how the things of wars and rumors of war and the famines were really what brought that about. Because, you know, after World War II, all the world was involved in World War II. And afterwards... You know, they, um, they, I think, uh, after World War One, I, I believe, they tried to create the League of Nations. And, and it was, uh, after that, that they did actually create a type of a league or a confederacy among all the nations. And, you know, we see that at, at work today. And, you know, so that there would never again be a decisive war. In other words, like, if you went to war with a country, there would not be a clear victory. It'd be kind of like, a stalemate, you know, we'll stop right here, you know, and you back off. And then the plan was is to connect all the nations financially. And, you know, that's why when uh, I think the senior Bush was in office, uh, uh, and I think uh, actually it could go all the way back to Nixon, but I know they, uh, they made, uh, they tried to, tried to make, you know, a league with China and then Nixon. I think it was Bush actually though that gave them what they called most favored nation status to bring them into the monetary fold because they were pretty independent before that time, but get them hooked on world money. And so that's what they did, you know, so they became great producers of products and got hooked on the world money so that they're part of it now. You know, everybody's working in the same direction. And so those things brought about this government that is cast upon the people that will become a one world socialist order and like I say I, I, I wish you could vote it out but it's coming God says it is it's cast upon the people we didn't buy into it it's cast upon us now there are those who love it and uh, are working to bring it about and then that we read about that great star that fell from heaven burning as if it were a lamp, but it didn't give light. It gives darkness. And that's dark teachings, just as Christ is the light of the world and his word gives light to the world. This gives darkness. So just you see what, uh, along with the waters uh, that became poison, so that, and that's poisonous teachings. So all of this, coming through the schools, the colleges, and even the churches. These poisonous teachings coming through all directions. And so they're, they are all interconnected, these trumps, these seals, to, and these vials, to bring all this about. So there's no turning it around. It's upon us. So, And so, you know, we see the... What as each each one came along, another third, another third, and another third. Those three thirds, but God's elect will not bow a knee to Baal. And then we read that after the four uh, trumps, that he said, "I beheld and heard an eagle." And I know the the English says angel, but it's an eagle flying through the midst of heaven, saying with a loud voice, "Woe." Whoa, whoa. And you can imagine that trill of the eagle out over the wilderness screaming out to the world that woe upon those. It says, whoa, 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 those last three times, five, six, and seven, to the inhabitants of the earth by reason of the other voices of the trumpet and of the three angels which are yet to sound. And... <clears throat> We did read through chapter 9 in a few verses, but I'm going to go through it again and uh, because I want you to understand, you know, God, and God's represented many times. He represents himself as that eagle, you know, giving us that, that warning, that shrill warning going out to, 
to the, the world, to the wilderness. So let's, let's look back over uh, chapter 9 and right on through. And the fifth angel sounded, and I saw a star fall from heaven unto the earth. And that means I saw one that had fallen. And as we went and we looked into the book of Luke and also in the book of Isaiah, that, that's Satan. He is the one, that angel that was fallen. So it's not like I'm watching him fallen right here. He said, he had fallen. I saw that one that was fallen. And to him was given the key of that bottomless pit too. And he opened the bottomless pit. There rose smoke out of the pit as the smoke of a great furnace. And the sun and the air were darkened by reason of the smoke of the pit. And this this darkness is a, a uh, just a more intense dark teaching that inhabits the the uh, the spirits of men as they absorb because your your spirit is your intellect so it's just becoming more and more intense going out as it went out with we saw with the uh, with the lamp and with the waters coming through the schools coming through the churches those dark teachings that gradually creeping their way in three and there came out of the smoke. No, they didn't come out of the pit. They came out of the smoke because they were influenced by the smoke, the dark teachings, the falsehoods, the deception. There came out of the smoke locusts upon the earth. These are men. So they're not bugs. God makes it very clear. They are men. And unto them was given power as the scorpions of the earth have power. And there, we'll read that their powers it's basically in their mouth. Now, of course, they have a great following that does their dirty work for them. You see them at work today. And there there uh, was given power as the scorpions of the earth have power for, and it was commanded them that they should not hurt the grass of the earth. Now, if they were locusts, they'd be eating the grass up. But they're not locusts, they're men. Neither any green thing, neither any tree, but only those men which have not the seal of God in their foreheads. And as I had said, that they can't touch us because we know better. It's those that buy into the lie that have to worry. If you have the word of God sealed in your forehead, they can't touch you. And it, five, and it was, and to them it was given that they should not kill them, but they should be tormented five months. And their torment was as the torment of a scorpion when he striketh a man. And with all their words and their actions, there's no actual sting going on. It's the things that people are hearing that is melting their backbones. They will not stand up against it. And then, I, mean, I mean, you talk to people today, you know, they say, you're like, yeah, well, if they do this again, we're going to do something about it next time. Well, what about the last time? You know, you never, you didn't do anything. You're not doing anything now. The sting of the scorpion. Your backbone has been melted. Six, and in those days shall men seek death and shall not find it and shall desire to die and death shall flee from them. And as I said, this comes, is in those same days, but this is at the end of those days when those who have gone, they did not have this love letter from God. They had a lot of preaching. They heard a lot of great sermons. They did not have the word of God sealed in their forehead. And so when the false one came, I mean, he's coming. He's a looker and he's coming with power. He's, he's going to show the wounds in his hands. He's going to promise to fix everything. He's going to heal that. that when that one world system fails, he's going to fix it. Promise to fix it. Promising peace and prosperity. And and so, like I say, he's going. They're going to believe that he is the true Christ, and so they're going to follow him. And then, when they see the true Christ coming, they're going to wish they could just die and hide from his face. And that's why men will desire to die. Seven and the shapes of the locust. Now, this this shapes doesn't mean what they look like. This means what is their character. This is what they're like. And the shapes or what their character of the locusts were like unto horses prepared unto battle. Now when you prepare a horse for battle, he just, you command to run straight into it, 
He don't care what's going on. He's going to run straight into it. The, the clatter and the noise of war doesn't bother him. He's trained. He runs right into the battle. These are trained and prepared with a mission to go and do Satan's work. They are prepared for it. And, and on their heads were, as it were, crowns of gold. And so pretending to be even of the tribe of Judy, pretending to be princes, but they're not, as Christ said, beware of those who claim to be Jews, but they're not. They are of the synagogue of Satan. Beware of them. Two churches are aware of it. The rest of them are not. The rest of the churches will believe that these are the true lineage of Judah. And even the one that claims to be the lion of the tribe of Judah, they will worship him. Five out, five out of seven churches will, is what the Lord shows us. And eight, and, and again, as they had hair as the hair of women and their teeth were as the teeth of lions. So, and this is another thing. It's not what they look like. This is their character. So they have a very loving, caring, gen gentle type of character. But the truth is they want to devour you, rip you to shreds like a lion. They want to take you to death. So you, and most people are going to fall for it. We, we're going to see it worldwide. Very few will not worship this Antichrist. Nine, they had breastplates, as it were, breastplates of iron. Now it says, as were. Now they're not actually wearing breastplates. This is a symbolism of what they are bringing. Just like the Levitical priest had a breastplate. And that represented that, if you want to call it a religion or that faith in God, this represents their religion. They put it on. I mean, it's just like it's right there over their heart. They're going to the world with their religion. But as it says, it was like as of iron. I mean, it's a very hard uh, religion. It's forced upon people. You won't be able to buy or sell. And it says... And the sound of their wings was as the sound of chariots of many horses running to battle. And this is actually, it's, it's the, the repeating of their lies and the, the, uh, the tone that you hear of, of all that deception, the volume and the tone of the constant lies worldwide coming from every direction, everybody repeating it. Believing that Jesus is here, Jesus is here, but he's not. It's the wrong Christ. It's the instead of Christ, the Antichrist. So that's that noise that's going to be overwhelming. And you, you, you look at the falsehoods that are being taught today, the volume of it that we're listening to that's coming out of the colleges, even coming out of the government. They're repeating these lies over and over again like, yeah, if we say it enough, they're going to believe it. It's going to stick. And you've got some of it has crept into the churches and they're starting to repeat all of it the same way. So everywhere you look, it's coming at you, these same lies. And most of the world is eventually going to buy into it. Verse 10, and they had tails like unto scorpions. So they're, they have, they've got some pretty vicious followers going out and they're rioting, they're burning, they're looting, they're beating up old women holding crosses. And there and there were stings in their tails and their followers, and their power was to hurt men five months. Now very interesting, you know, this five months, uh that's I think that was the same amount of time that it rained on the ark, but the five months, May through September, you know, that's that's the time of the locust. You know, five months. They have a five month period. And so uh, we'll just say that's of interest because we don't know the day or the hour, but we do know the season. We can see it. So, but they have that same five months when, and that's how long Satan has to play uh, the instead of Christ. 11, and they had a king over them, which is the angel of the bottomless pit, whose name in the Hebrew tongue is Abaddon. 
And that in that Hebrew tongue meaning destroyer. But he is also the one that perishes, the son of perdition. But in the Greek tongue hath his name Apollyon, same meaning. So no matter what language you say it in, it's Satan, the destroyer, the son of perdition, the one, the only one by name who has been sentenced to perish. So as we go through it, God will confirm again and again who he is. Because you'll hear people say, oh, it's some guy going to be coming from that country or from this country. Like, God told you exactly who it is. You don't have to guess. We know who he is. Satan ain't going to let nobody else take his glory. Believe me. So, <clears throat> so one woe is past. So in that fifth trump, oh, in that, in that fifth woe trump, you see the preparations being made for the coming of the Antichrist. The world is being made ready. Just as I said that many preparations were made like by John the Baptist and many other things for the true Christ when he came in the flesh. Preparations are being made to receive this one. So one woe is past and behold there come two woes more hereafter. 13. And the sixth angel sounded. Now this this is part of that six, 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 six seal. This is a six trump. The sixth vial, you see it matches perfect. It's that six, six, six. That's what time he comes. It's no number stamped on your head. It's what time the clock says it is. And the sixth angel sounded, and I heard a voice from the four horns of the golden altar, which is before God. And so these, these four horns that is just like this, the altar that we modeled in front of the podium here, that the, like the, the salvation message or, or the word of God goes out in all directions to the world, north, east, south, and west, covering, covering, covering the planet. Well, this, this same message is, there's a message going out at this point in time, 14, saying to the sixth angel, which had the trumpet, Loose the four angels which are bound in the great river Euphrates. Now the Euphrates has always been the border between Babylon and the rest of the world, or between Babylon and, say, Israel. But these are going to be loosed to go north, east, south, and west. Four represents the earth because of those four directions and many other things that it represents the earth. So they're going to carry the uh, preparations and the religion of this false one who's coming. They're going, it's going to broadcast out across the world. <clears throat> 15, and the four angels were loosed, which were prepared for an hour and a day and a month and a year for to slay the third part of men. So that means that they were prepared for a precise instant in time god knows exactly when that instant is but that's exactly what that's saying an hour a day a month and a year that precise instant 16 and the number of the army of the horsemen were two hundred thousand thousand i heard the number of them now uh this in the greek it's a if i can pronounce it right myriad is that right, Sherry? Myrid? It's myrid, myrid. Now, in the ancient Greek, it doesn't mean any certain number. It means an indistinguishable or uncountable number. And that's what this is. I mean, there's so many that you can't count them. But uh, this is the great apostasy, is what this is. That God says the whole world will whore after this false one. The whole world will. So yes, you cannot count this number when these four angels go out spreading the false so-called truths that they're spreading, that this Christ is here, this is Jesus. Uh, the whole world will be celebrating. An uncountable number is right on team with him. Um, these include the greatest number of Christians on earth today. It includes them also because they have not heard 
what we are talking about here. Not They have not heard this teaching. They've heard some great messages, but not the word of God. They have not been prepared for this. And so when this one shows up, showing the wounds, stamping his finger, calling fire down from heaven, doing miracles, promising that this this is a glorious time, uh, peace on earth, prosperity for all. And uh, it we're going to, uh, many who today are in church pe- uh, uh, preaching a message, they're going to be the fr- front runners wearing those breastplates, spreading the good news for this one. And there are going to be some that will be caught in shame. 17, and thus I saw the horses in the vision and them that sat on them having breastplates of fire and of jasoneth and of brimstone. Now these, uh, some, some people I see where they, even in Strong's, they, they tried to call Jason, it's like a deep blue, but uh, it's actually a red, almost like a purple. Now you could mix uh, blue and red and get this sometimes as purple, but uh, Dr. Green's, now he was one of the only people that I saw that caught it. Uh, many others did not catch it, but it's kind of like the, the, uh, the in the English, they, they tried to use a word to mean like the Highsmith flower of that blue or purplish, I mean not blue, but of that red or purplish red color is what they meant. But uh, of, it's had had the appearance of fire, jasoneth, and brimstone. So these uh, these breastplates, it represents a religion. They're not actually wearing breastplates, but it's what they're portraying as they go out into the world. And this image represents hell's fire is what it represents. So they are teaching a religion that leads right to the lake of fire. And I thank God that we have the millennium because they, everyone will know the truth in the millennium and the great white throne judgment does not come until after the millennium. So, uh, and the heads of the horses were as the heads of lions and out of their mouths issued fire and smoke and brimstone. So these, again, these are people. But God's given you an image of their character, not what they look like. And this is another reason why so many will be deceived. They're looking for all these grotesque monsters to be on the earth when they see this beautiful one show up with his beautiful angels talking all these wonderful things. All you got to do is worship me. They're going to worship him. So they have not been caught, taught God's word, and it's not getting out there. I mean, we're recording this, and it's being buried in the sand. There's very few sharing it. So as God, as I said, God said, buy of me that gold tried in the fire, and look at those who are burying it in the sand and not sharing it. Blood will be on their hands. So I pray that they warn those that they love. And so, you know, it says that this fire and smoke and brimstone comes out of their mouth. What comes out of your mouth? Words. So, uh, fire that will devour your faith. The words that will devour your faith. Smoke that will blind you to the truth. All you can see are the smoky words that they're, that they're preaching. You can't even see the word of God. Of course, many of these never looked anyway. And this brimstone leading them to ultimate death. Spiritually dead is what this brings them to. 18, by these three was the third part of men killed by the fire and by the smoke and by the brimstone which issued out of their mouths. Those words that issued out of their mouths. Those words of deceptions and lies that you hear Every place you go today, like I said, the schools, the churches, the government, you're hearing these words of deception. 19, for their power is in their mouth. That's where it is. Their words, their power is in their mouth, their words. And in their tails, in all those followers that they have, just like Satan brought a third of God's children with the tail, the followers that follow after them. For, for their tails were like unto serpents and had heads, and with them they do hurt. And so these who are of the serpent's seed, the children of Satan, wicked children doing Satan's work. They're just like uh, Father 
the devil, as Christ called them. 20, and the rest of the men which were not killed by these plagues, yet repented not of the works of their hands, that they should not worship devils and idols of gold and silver and brass and stone and of wood, which can neither see nor hear nor walk. Now, you may not see people uh, making idols out of these images, but these images are their idols. As you, you see it increasing more and more materialism, because that's part of what the shortage is, uh, as I've said, that you'll see happen, that materialism will become more and more important and prevalent in people's lives. You know, they're wanting to buy this, they're wanting to buy that. And, and so all this, all these things of the earth that will have no value in that heavenly realm. As Christ said, you, you have all these things, but you're poor. You have nothing. He said, buy of me that gold tried in the fire, that word, the word of God. So, and of course, uh, some of the idols they are carving out are a different Christ. They're not carved out of wood, but carved out of the words that they used to portray him that not our rock, but their rock. 21, neither repented they of their murders, nor of their sorceries, nor of their fornication, nor of their thefts. So just wickedness, um, these these sorceries, um, it's it's almost like, you, you know, that, that means like a drug. And uh, of course, most of it, I believe, I would say that words that intoxicate but you see also everybody pushing things like medical marijuana. I mean, with a vengeance. Uh, doctor I go to said, would you like medical marijuana? I said, no, I would not. <laughs> I've watched too many lives ruined, too many bad decisions. And, you know, people say, well, it's not as bad as drinking or something. Well, drinking's not good either. Or getting drunk is not good either. But I've watched people make bad decisions. They may not realize they're making bad decisions, but you get to smoking it, and pretty soon somebody in the marriage is going to make a bad decision, mess up. Or wherever they're at, they're going to make a bad decision. It happens. I've watched lives ruined. So uh, these sorceries, these drugs are not good. Ten, and I saw another mighty angel come down from heaven clothed with a cloud and a rainbow was upon his head and his face was as it were the sun and his feet as pillars of fire this is as we may say the angel of god himself as he has appeared many times through the ages to to the, the our ancient forefathers but this is god himself or christ himself too and he had in his hand a little book open and he set his right foot upon on the sea and his left foot upon the earth the sea being the people the earth and he's showing absolute power dominion king of king lord of lords so with all these things we see happening with the four angels being loose from the euphrates or that border of babylon so that babel the confusion could spread across the planet and that's what they're doing they're, they're spreading babel across the planet and these with those imaginary breastplates spreading that false religion you see all these things happen the lord is good enough to say i'm still in charge king of king and lord of lords three and cried with a loud voice as when a lion roareth and and what a roar that must be to hear his voice and when he had cried seven thunders uttered their voices and when the seven thunders had uttered their voices I was about to write, and I heard a voice from heaven saying unto me, Seal up those things which the seven thunders uttered, and write them not. And But they are written. Christ said, I have foretold you all things. It's written. Haven't you read it? So this, what was uttered, is part of the message that he is giving here when he's planted his foot on the sea and upon the earth, that he is in full power and control so and you know i've told you before that the voice of god is described as thunder because and you you know you can read many times when god spoke to somebody just like to paul 
Those around him thought they heard thunder, but Paul heard the voice in the Hebrew language. But let's go to Psalm 29 and let's read about these seven thunders. Psalms 29. And this is the message. Uh, 29 verse 1. Give unto the Lord, O ye mighty. So all ye mighty men, everyone of the earth, give, ye, give unto the Lord, O ye mighty. Give unto the Lord glory and strength. Verse 2. Give unto the Lord the glory due unto his name. And he is due that glory. And he's receiving it. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Verse 3. And this is the first thunder. Thunder 1. The voice of the Lord is upon the waters, upon these people. His voice has gone out to the people. The God of glory thundereth. So that's one thunder. The Lord is upon many waters all over this world. Uh, verse 4, the second thunder. The voice of the Lord is powerful. The, and the third, the voice of the Lord is full of majesty. Verse 5 and the fourth thunder. The voice of the Lord breaketh the cedars. And that means those uh, mighty men, like they're portrayed as like mighty kings of the earth. And so the voice of the Lord, he can, he can tear them down anytime he wants. Yea, the Lord breaketh the cedars of Lebanon. So those kings of the earth. Six, he maketh them also to skip like a calf, Lebanon, Syrian, like a young unicorn. A unicorn means a, like a wild ox. So, uh, in other words, he can, he can knock down, tear down, and destroy the most mighty, but he can raise up the most tender and young ones upon the earth. Five, uh, uh, verse seven, the, the fifth thunder. The voice of the Lord divideth the flames of fire. In other words, lightning coming down upon the earth. He is in full control. He can do as he pleases with, even with lightning. Verse eight, the sixth thunder. The voice of the Lord shaketh the wilderness. The Lord shaketh the wilderness of Kadesh. So he can, he can destroy and make a wilderness out of a great out of a great forest with just with his voice, with that thunder. Verse 9, the seventh thunder. The voice of the Lord maketh the hinds to calve and discovereth the forest. So bring in life. He can destroy wickedness and he can bring life. And in his temple doth everyone speak of his glory. So that's what we're looking at in this, in this chapter in Revelation. Everyone speaking of his glory. 10. The Lord sitteth upon the flood, and now all the peoples of the earth. Yea, the Lord sitteth king forever. The Lord will give strength unto his people. The Lord will bless his people with peace. So let's go back uh, to Revelation. My marker fell out, so... So as we read, and when the seven thunders had uttered their voices, I was about to write and heard a voice from heaven saying unto me, Seal up those things which the seven thunders uttered, and write them not. But they are written. Five, and the angel which I saw stand upon the sea and upon the earth lifted up his hand to heaven, and swear by him that liveth forever and ever, who created heaven and the things that therein are, and the earth, and the things that therein are, and the sea, and the things which are therein, that there should be time no longer. So when the sixth trump is finished, when the seventh comes, that's it. It's over. The true Christ returns, and 
every all wickedness is destroyed that age is finished and just as you know the apostles in in uh, in Matthew chapter 24 when uh, Christ was talking about the destruction and they said well tell us when will these things be when what which signs should we look for for your coming for your returning and for the end of the world and he went on to describe all of these all of these seals and trumps so we know exactly when they happen and as i had said that you know many people say oh that happened a thousand years ago no christ said it happens just prior to his coming just prior to the end of the world so and he can swear by no higher source or than himself seven but in the days of the voice of the seventh angel when he shall begin to sound the mystery of god should be finished as he hath declared to his servants the prophets and the voice which i heard from heaven spake unto me again and said go and take the little book which is open in the hand of the angel which standeth upon the sea and upon the earth nine and i went unto the angel and said unto him give me the little book and he said unto me take it and eat it up and it shall make thy belly bitter but it shall be in thy mouth sweet as honey now this is just as christ had had told us that you know you must eat his body he is that bread of life that came from heaven what is his body the word of god he said those that do will become one with me and i one with them so by consuming this whole little book that's how we become one with christ through his word and yes as we read this it's just as sweet as honey in our mouth but then with the knowledge that you receive from it and you look around the world today it is bitter in your heart to see what is happening as he said it shall make it eat it up and it shall make thy belly bitter but it shall be in thy mouth sweet as honey and it is 10 and i took the little book out of the angel's hand and ate it up and it was in my mouth sweet as honey and as soon as i had eaten it my belly was bitter so your belly your innards your heart it it breaks your heart to see those who what they are in for because they have been so misled 11 and he said unto me thou must prophesy again before many peoples and nations and tongues and kings and that's what we must do this that we receive this gold tried in fire we must wisely invest it into others that they also may be prepared for these days that are coming and i'm going to ask our uh, pastor of bill scott to come up and have a few words with you but as we next week we we will be um finding out some great things about the area right around uh jerusalem what's going to be happening and what we what god will tell us are his two witnesses that come with a likeness of moses and elijah and doing great miracles just as they did so uh we'll we'll start that next week so we look forward to, to bringing that to you Well, good morning, beloved. What a powerful time in God. And what a powerful word this morning, brother. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for being obedient to the Spirit and teaching and preaching the things that is not wanted to be heard. <laughs> you see, we can preach a glorifying message and lift everybody up, make everybody feel good. But oftentimes, when truth is preached, you will see a gloss come over people. They don't want to hear it. Uh, I've even seen them get violent over it. So, uh, but this morning, I, you know, in prayer to the Lord, and, and before I go on too, too much farther, 
The Bible says that we are made overcomers by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony. My testimony this morning, you know, of course, there's got to be a test before there can be a moaning. Before I can speak forth an alimony of glory, I have to have been tested. My test this morning and that has has fulfilled in two-part prayer being answered is one, God, keep my little girl safe. Keep her safe, God. The other is, God, I'd like to see that same set of eyes that looked upon me as when she was little look upon me with favor again. And this morning she walked up into this church house to share this service with her daddy and, and, and her mama and, and uh, I couldn't be more blessed. The word of my testimony, amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God that my little grandson's here with me too. And he never seen Pappy behind the pulpit, have you? <laughs> well, it is indeed a day where we should be focusing on the word of God. As, as brother has said, this whole word right here is my everything. And uh, to, to eat it and to become one with God is to become one with his word. Let it fill you full daily. Daily. Let your minds be renewed by it daily. And I look upon that, and there's so many still this morning in the land whose hearts are broken. There are so many this November and this December who will go to a dining room table, and that one special person, that chair, is not filled. Some families to this day who are even still setting that plate for them. And, you know, many many see it as, well, you know, it was a terrible thing that happened and this and that. And, but those who know the Word of God know that that is the first signs and, and symbols of, of the uh, pale horse kicking his heel 20 years ago. Kicking those heels up, that pale horse, which is actually a green horse. And we know that that color green represents a specific faith that has a quarter of the earth's population under control that brought that whole thing about. And so the fruit of the pale horse is like what we saw 20 years ago. So many heartbroken families this morning, even this day, and have suffered for all these years, losing their loved ones in that awful attack. And so this day, I, 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 my heart is, is heavy with them. And uh, I am a sworn enemy of the pale horse, and I don't mind saying that. I truly am. And I just give God the glory. I give God the praise and lift up those families and all of us who are indeed living in, in the last days and we need the grace of Christ. This morning is, is more so than ever before, my heart goes out to those who don't have Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. And I would say to you, you can come to him. You can, all those who are out there in the viewing audience that are listening to my voice, you can come to Jesus. Repent of your sin. That means to go the opposite direction and go back toward God because you're going away from Go toward God. Repent for your sin. In your heart, ask Jesus in. Just go to the Lord with me now in prayer if you would. Lord Jesus God, I just ask that you would come in to the hearts of those calling upon you today, Father, that you would be first and prominent in our life, Lord. Lord God, that all that call upon your name today, Lord, that the same be saved. Lord Jesus, forgive me of my sin. Be my Lord and Savior. And please dwell within the ministry of my soul and my heart. In Jesus' mighty name, amen and amen and amen. amen. Hallelujah. And so with the words that I like to normally leave the service with, uh, from Numbers chapter 6, verse 24, The Lord bless thee and keep thee. The Lord make his face shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. The Lord lift up his countenance upon thee and give thee peace. Beloved, we will see you again on Wednesday night. In the meantime, stay good in God.